The coronavirus has changed so many things in our world. Wearing a face mask in public has become a social norm, and in some cases, required. But will it affect the way we build our e-learning courses? I think so. Hi, this is William Everhart with e-learning Uncovered. I've created some cutout mask photos that you can put on your e-learning characters. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use these masks in Articulate Storyline and Adobe Captivate, but you can use similar techniques for any e-learning authoring tool. Ready to see how it's done? Let's jump first into Storyline and give our characters some face masks. I have already added characters to my slide. In this case, I'm using photographic characters because the mask I have, well, they're photographs too. Now to give these characters masks, I'll go to the insert ribbon and I'll choose picture to insert a picture from my hard drive. Now I'll choose the mask style and the pose that I like and then select open. So let's start with something simple here. Let's start with just a forward or front facing mask. Choose open here. These images are high resolution and are much larger than my slide. Now, I purposely made these images large to suit a variety of slide sizes. Remember, it's always easier to scale an image down than it is to scale one up. So now all I have to do is use the transform handles to scale this image down to fit my character. I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to kind of nudge this around a little bit. And if I need to, I can actually rotate this mask a little bit to better fit the character. So I'm just going to grab the rotation tool here. And I'm going to click and hold and then I'm going to drag way up here towards the top. And what this does is give me a little more finite control over this adjustment. And so what I'll do is while I'm you know, rotating this around, I'm going to hold down the Alt key, and what that does is give me a real, real fine control. I can move this like one degree at a time if I want. So uh, that looks pretty good. Just a very subtle adjustment there, but it really makes all the difference in the world. All right, so that mask is in place. Let's take a look at a couple of the other masks that we have here. So let me go back up to Insert. I'm going to go back to Picture. This time I'm going to choose the uh, Profile mask. So I'm going to select Open here. Again, it's a really large mask, so I'm going to have to scale this down. I'm using the corner uh, transform handles to transform these or scale these proportionately. And you can get away with using the center handles if you needed to um, you know, do this non-proportionally. If you needed to stretch the image a little bit, you can certainly do that. But in this case, notice that, well, my character is facing one way, but the mask is facing the other. Do I have a copy of the mask facing the other direction? Well, no, I don't, because I can just repurpose this one. With the image selected, I'm going to go up to the Picture Tools Format ribbon, and then over here to the right to the Arrange and Align. And under Rotate, I'll choose Flip Horizontal. So it just flipped the mask the opposite direction. Perfect. I'm going to reposition this mask. I'm going to get it pretty close. It needs to scale down just a little bit more. Like so. I think that's pretty good. Now, take a look at the straps for the mask. Obviously, they're a little long. So both the profile and the three-quarter mask show a bit more of these straps that hold the mask in place. Now, these have been purposely left in place to accommodate a wide range of characters. If, for instance, your character has hair that would cover those straps, well, just use the cropping feature to reduce the length of the straps. Now, in this case, his hair doesn't cover it, but I really don't want it, you know, going over his ear like this. So I'm just going to cover this up by going over here to the crop tool. And then I'm just going to grab this cropping handle here and pull this in and just crop this probably somewhere along in here. I'm going to have to kind of split the difference underneath his ear and above his ear here, like so. That looks pretty good. So there we have it. Now I have this mask in place, and here's one of those instances where 
maybe the mask is a little too tall, you know? So what I can do is I can use this bottom center handle and I can pull that bottom up a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy with it, but I do want to make it a little bit more form fitting, if you will. And so there we have it. If you need to, again, you could use the rotate tool to rotate this. And if I hold down the alt key while I do that, I can get some really, really finite control. And by golly, that looks pretty good. So the last one here is kind of a three quarter shot. So when we put these masks together, I tried to give you a forward facing, a profile, kind of an off axis front, and then more of a three quarter shot. So this to me is probably an off axis front, maybe not a full three quarter. So I'm gonna go back to insert. I'm gonna go back to picture. And here I have uh, kind of an off axis, and I call this one off axis right. There's one called off axis left too, and it just has some different folds in it, just to give you a little variety in there. Uh, but I'm gonna choose this one. I'm gonna scale it down to fit my character. I'm going to nudge this to the left. And really what I look for is the uh, the bend in the mask. That's where it goes across the bridge of the nose and then the chin down here. So if I can pretty much get that in place, then I can um, make adjustments beyond that. So I try to set that first. And then if I need to, well, that'll tell me if I need to rotate it. So in this case, I think I need to rotate it a little bit to the right. Pull it back this way it down a little bit and that looks pretty good maybe a little too much rotation there again holding down the alt key and rotating gives me a little more finite control over that and then i can use this side handle here a little bit to tuck that side in just a little bit more there we go looking pretty good so that's how it's done here inside of articulate storyline now, some other things that you can do here, depending on the mask. Now, this particular mask lends itself to this pretty well. It's got a, a nice kind of a rich uh, royal blue color to it. If I go up here to the picture tools format ribbon, I can, you know, adjust the brightness on this. So if I felt like the mask was a little too dark for my character, I can brighten it up a little bit like so. So you can see it's kind of fading it out. You wouldn't want to go too far on this, but it also kind of gives you a different look for the uh, mask, maybe changing the color there a little bit. I think that's a little too strong, but you could certainly do this. You could also darken it down a little bit if you needed to. Um, but let's say I just give it a little 10% bump there. Um, I can also use the recolor option here to recolor the mask. Now with this, you want to be very careful because it will also recolor the straps. So just be mindful of what you're recoloring here. But I can apply some of these accent colors to this to kind of change the color of the mask a little bit if I wanted to. And if you wanted to, you can go down here to more variations and you can choose other colors. So if you wanted to try on some of these other colors in here, you certainly can. Not all of them are going to work, especially when we start getting into um, contrasting colors. So this is a blue. If I put in a contrasting color of say an orange or a red, we're going to see some really weird artifacts going on here. It doesn't really like those quite so much, but as long as I stay kind of in the blue family here, I can vary or alter the, uh, the color uh, a little bit there. So a uh, really cool little feature, just a little bonus tip there for you. So that's how we do this in Storyline. Let's take a look at how we do this in Adobe Captivate. All right, so here we are in Captivate. And once again, I have my characters already in place. Now it's just a matter of adding masks to those characters. So I'm going to go up here to the top into the ribbon here. I'm going to choose Media and I'll choose Image. And then I'm going to select my mask. So let me just try the clinical mask here. And my doctor is kind of looking off axis a little bit there. So I'm going to choose this off axis left here and I'm going to open that. Again, the image is really large, so I'm going to have to scale this down. Now, Captivate gives you this little button over here in the properties panel that says fit to stage. So I'll just click on that first just to kind of get it to where it's a little more manageable. 
and then I will grab the corner handle here. Now, I have to hold down the shift key in this case as I do this uh, transform so that the mask transforms proportionately. So I'm holding the shift key as I drag that corner handle and then I'm going to position the mask. And then once again, holding that shift key, I'm going to drag this mask out. And that one fits almost perfect without any adjustment there. That works pretty well. However, this character is photographed under some really intense lighting. And so I might need to adjust the brightness of my mask a little bit. Now to do this in Captivate, I want to select the mask. And because it's an image, I'll just go over here to the Properties panel and I'm going to click Edit Image. And so it's going to show me a picture of the mask. In this case, I'm going to use the uh, brightness slider here. I'm going to move it just a little bit. It doesn't need a whole lot. I think maybe, you know, between 10 and 15% would be just fine. I think that's going to look just great. I'm going to tell this OK. It does reposition it a little bit. I don't know why it does that. It's kind of a little wonky thing, but it does do it. So I'll just reposition the mask back where it's supposed to be. And the more I look at it, I think it might need a little bit of adjustment as far as rotation goes. So uh, here at the top of the image is the little rotation tool or widget, if you will. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to pull away from it a little bit, and I'm going to rotate it ever so slightly to the right. That looks a little better to me. All right, so now moving on to uh, this character here. Let's put a mask on this character. Again, I'm going to go up to the media button here, and I'm going to choose image. This time, I'm going to go back to um, that homemade style that I have. And this is more of a, a face forward. So I'm going to choose this homemade front. Choose open. Again, it's going to be really, really large. So I'll choose fit to stage. Scale it where I can make it a little more manageable here. And then again, I'm going to shift drag this corner handle to scale this down to fit my character. So we're getting close here. Scale a little bit more. Really, really close. That's looking pretty good. I think we need to make it just a little bit wider. So I'll just drag it out just a little bit wider like so. That looks pretty good. So there you have it. Very similar process of placing an image and then just transforming it to fit your character. Now, one of the other differences between Storyline and Captivate in the way that it handles these images is that I have a little more of a creative freedom when it comes to recoloring these masks. So I'm going to take this mask here that I just placed on this character. And over in the Properties panel, I'm going to click Edit Image. Now I'm going to move this uh, over here out of the way. And so what I would like to do is, again, I can play around with the brightness if I wanted to, maybe adjust it a little bit, make it a little bit brighter. Uh, but the real big difference here are the addition of these two sliders here, the hue and saturation. Uh, with the hue, I can change the color. So I want my character to have a nice bright magenta uh, mask here because that blue well, was just kind of boring there. So let's liven things up a little bit. Now, this might be a little too bright. So that's where the saturation slider comes in. Uh, you really want to use this on these really vibrant colors. It, it allows you to reduce that vibrance, um, that pow, if you will, of the color. So if it seems like it's a little too much, just use that saturation slider and, and pull it back a little bit. Well, that looks pretty good. I'll tell this OK. And once again, it does move the image. I don't know why it does that. It's just kind of a little glitch there. But it does move it a little bit. And I just reposition it to fit my character. And so there you have it. Adding face masks to your characters in both Articulate Storyline and Adobe Captivate. I hope that you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Follow the link in the description below to download these mask photos for yourself. Feel free to use these masks in your own courses. There's no attribution required. This is William Everhart with eLearning Uncovered saying stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, folks, stay curious.